everybody, and welcome to Siena. Welcome to an early start for a very important softball game between the Ridgepoint Panthers and the Austin Bulldogs. Austin coming off of an awesome win over Travis. 3-2 they won it on Tuesday night, knocking the Travis Tigers girls from the ranks of the undefeated. And now Austin needs to follow that up with a big victory against Ridgepoint. Ridgepoint needs to win this game pretty badly as well. I'm Roger Smith. This is VibeFortBend.com. We're going to step aside and be back with the starting lineups in this game between Austin and Ridgepoint. Some great seniors on both teams who will be facing each other in a district game for the last time. And there's going to be a lot of passion out there. And we'll bring it to you here on VibeFortBend.com. mandatory for breakfast maybe you'd decide mullets were fashionable again and if what if you made the rules you'd probably make ice cream mandatory for breakfast maybe you'd decide mullets were fashionable again and if you were in charge of your wireless plan you'd most likely do something to save yourself a bunch of money well you're in luck because when you get xfinity mobile and internet together you can save up to 300 dollars a year on your wireless bill and with xfinity mobile you can choose the perfect data option for each person using it from unlimited to shared data or a mix of each all in one plan hey you're making the rules here Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile to save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63021. Restrictions apply. New performance started plus Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra, and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Wireless savings compares to averages of top providers. Xfinity Internet required. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know, take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. GetAgreatGig.com presents Gary Horn of HornSolutions.net on the most important factors in starting a business. Number one, where will you get the necessary capital? Two, you will probably not make money for some period of time. Prepare a conservative model of expected cost and revenues. Three, are you willing to work long hours for no pay and make sure all employees are paid? For more free career and job search advice, log on to GetAgreatGig.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn, CEO of Horn Solutions. Our team of experienced accounting, finance, and IT professionals have delivered solutions to Houston businesses for over three decades. Our project group provides services ranging from assisting with mergers, acquisitions, and integrations to interim staffing. Our executive search group provides full-time placements for accounting, finance, and IT positions. Let Horn Solutions help you meet the challenges your company faces. Visit hornsolutions.net. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. VibeFortBend.com coverage of Fort Bend ISD softball is brought to you tonight by Xfinity, the future of awesome. Also brought to you by First Tire and Automotive, the four great locations in Fort Bend County. We will step aside and be back and give you the starting lineups and get the game underway between the Ridgepoint Panthers and the Austin Bulldogs. Happy April Fool's Day. I have a question. 
Are you ready? Ready for anything? Ready for what life throws at you? At your kids? Are they ready to study? To research? To write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. And what about you? Yeah, you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Ready to take opportunity. To make opportunity. To be on top of things. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. When you're connected, you're ready for anything. It's a simple question. Are you ready? Are you ready? Ready for anything. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes extra. Restrictions apply. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know, take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there's one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTyronAuto.com All right, under bright sunny skies here in Siena and the Bandbox Baseball Park, or I should say softball field of the Austin Bulldogs, well, of the Ridgepoint Panthers. Again, this is a game that will be the last one ever played between the great seniors on both of these squads, and they certainly have some of those. So let's give you the starting lineups first of all for the Austin Bulldogs. Alyssa Carter plays left field and leads off. Batting second, it's Trichelle Esquivez. She's in center field. Jesse Shipley, right, the shortstop the for the Bulldogs, batting third. Batting cleanup, it's their pitcher, Angelina Leal. Tiana McFarland is catching and batting fifth for the Dogs. Batting sixth, it's Zoe Zamora at third base. Batting seventh, Ashley Cook in right field. Autumn Rogers is the DH and she bats eighth and she's batting in place of first base player Charlotte O'Callaghan. And in the ninth spot, it is Olivia Driscoll at second base for Austin. And for Ridgepoint, Malin Simmons is leading off and pitching. She is getting the start this afternoon. Jade Uresti bats second and plays shortstop where Malin normally plays when Malin isn't pitching. Grace Yannick playing third base bats third. Alexis Samine is catching and batting cleanup. Reagan Green is at first base. She will bat fifth. Batting sixth, it's Nohea Anderson. She is the designated player. Batting seventh, it is Riley Ship in left field. Blaine Simmons is in right field and batting eighth. Callie Mays is in center field and batting ninth, and Hannah Purvis is playing second base, and Nohea Anderson batting in the sixth spot, bats in place of Hannah Purvis. Okay, we're ready to go. So these Austin Bulldog girls really played themselves back into the district race with that big win over Travis on Tuesday. I even had some people saying, why weren't you there? Well, it's because I can't be everywhere, and it was a pretty big baseball game between the Ridgepoint boys and Elkins. And that was a good game for a while, but Ridgepoint did pull away near the end and they won by a score of 11 to two. So you've got Ridgepoint coming into this game with a six and two district record, 15 and seven overall. But uh, they have the problem of being behind Travis and George Ranch. That's something that they're not really used to. So here we go, Malin Simmons. Delivering the first pitch, and it's a strike to Alyssa Carter. Right-hander, Malin Simmons, massaging the baseball and brings the next pitch. Swung on, it's a little number towards second base, a lot of spin on it, but easily fielded by Hannah Purvis, who throws to Reagan Green, and that is the first out. Score it four to three. Trichelle Esquivel batting 291 on the season. 
316 on base percentage. She has four doubles, but no other extra base hits. Right handed hitter. Simmons rocks and brings it and just misses the inside corner near the knees. These two teams have really ruled District 26A for the last three or four seasons. Next pitch is in there for a called strike on the inside corner. It looked like Simmons was going after the same spot that she was trying to find on the first pitch. Wind is blowing out toward left field, but not very hard, and the 1-1 pitch is down and in. All three pitches to Esquivel have been right there down towards her toenails. Here's the 2-1. Swing and a little weak grounder toward third. Grace Yannick charges, throws across in time. So Simmons inducing contact on each of the first two hitters. And we got bases clean and two away for Jesse Shipley. And that's really what any opponent of the Austin Bulldogs needs is for the bases to be empty when Shipley steps up there. Wow, she leads the team in hits with 22, triples with three, and homers with seven. She has more homers than the whole rest of the team combined. First pitch to her is a strike. Jesse has driven in 20 runs, bats 423 with a 492 on base percentage. Open stance from the right handed box, set pretty much near the back of the box as Simmons brings the 0 1. And that just missed down and away. Jesse Shipley with a great eye. Her big brother Daniel was a great shortstop on the Bulldog baseball teams. I believe he was class of 2018. Simmons brings it. And that's a strike. Now one and two on Jesse Shipley. Because of the five o'clock start, I didn't use, get to have the usual chit chat with head coaches. Lindsey Gage of Ridgepoint and Holly Copeman of Austin. There's a called strike three and down goes Jesse Shipley. That does not happen very often. One, two, three inning for Malin Simmons and the Ridgepoint Panthers. And coming to bat will be the Panthers next. We'll line up the Austin defense for you and return on VikeFortBend.com. What if you made the rules? You'd probably make ice cream mandatory for breakfast. Maybe you'd decide mullets were fashionable again. And if you were in charge of your wireless plan, you'd most likely do something to save yourself a bunch of money. Well, you're in luck. Because when you get Xfinity Mobile and Internet together, you can save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. And with Xfinity Mobile, you can choose the perfect data option for each person using it. From unlimited to shared data or a mix of each. All in one plan. Hey, you're making the rules here. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile to save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63021. Restrictions apply. New performance started plus Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra, and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Wireless savings compares to averages of top providers. Xfinity Internet required. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. All right, we are back for the bottom of the first inning. Austin did not score in the top of the frame, and now it's the Ridgepoint Lady Panthers. Malin Simmons, Jade Uresti, and Grace Yannick, one, two, three, to face Leal. That is Angelina Leal. She's 10 and five on the season. This will be her 20th game in which she has pitched. And her 19th start, she's given up 78 hits in 92 innings, 63 runs, 
42 of those earned. She walked 39, but struck out, whoa, 143. She has an ERA of 2.3, I'm sorry, 3.20. Her whip is 1.27. She's had 23 one, two, three innings and throws 64% strikes. And down it away to Malin Simmons. By the way, Leal throws 63% first pitch strikes, but that was a ball to Simmons. Left-handed swinger. And the face of the franchise this year. Leal brings it. And that is down and away. 2-0 and oh the count. Opposing batters hit 213 against Leal. Simmons ready. That's a strike on the outside corner. You know, most batters will kind of move the bat back and forth or the end of the bat will go in a circle while they're waiting for the pitch, but some hitters like Malin Simmons keep a very quiet bat. It's just not moving at all. Leal brings it. There's another strike. It's on the outside corner, makes it two and two on Simmons. Both of these teams trailing George Ranch and Travis in the district standings. Leal massaging the softball. Here comes the 2-2. Check swing. She went around. Swinging strikeout. So you see Malin Simmons strike out in inning number one. She's the main hitting star for Ridgepoint. And then prior to that, you had Jesse Shipley strike out looking. Now Jade Uresti. She gets the start at second base. Leal with eye black, and the sun is very bright, but here at Ridgepoint, it's behind the fielder, so the sun is not really in anyone's eyes except the fans, and I'm one of them. Leal brings the first pitch outside for a ball. Now the, a lot of the Ridgepoint girls showed up during the game between the baseball game between Elkins and Ridgepoint, which Ridgepoint won 11-2 on Tuesday night. Next pitch is down and away from Leal. She falls behind 2 and nothing on Uresti. Two straight lefty hitters at the top of the Ridgepoint lineup. Swing and a tapper foul on the ground to the left. Tiana McFarland is the catcher for Austin. Charlotte O'Callaghan playing first base. Olivia Driscoll at second. Jesse Shipley at short. Zoe Zamora at third base. And in the outfield, left field is Alyssa Carter. In center, it's Trishel Esquivel and Ashley Cook in right. Two and one the count on Uresti. Leal brings it. And a called strike on the outside corner. And a home plate umpire is very consistent with those calls. I think it's kind of a generous outside corner, especially to the left-handed hitters. But hitters need to adjust to that. Uresti digs in, ready for the 2-2. Leal brings it. Just missed the outside corner. That was pretty close. And the count goes full. Hope you enjoyed your day. Hope nobody pranked you on April Fool's Day. Here's the 3-2. Swing and a foul off the front of the Ridgepoint dugout on the left side. I had one of those unusual days. Normally I teach school, but I simply had to stay home today because that's the only day the carpet people could come. And we've needed new carpet since, well, you know when. Since a pipe burst. Here's the 3-2, and it's a line drive, but it again goes foul. Uresti doing a good job of fighting off what Leal is serving up. Here's another 3-2. She swings and misses, and down she goes. Leal strikes out the first two hitters. Now Grace Yannick will come up. 
Grace showed up when the Ridgepoint boys played against Austin at peaceful bucolic Pheasant Creek in a game we broadcasted for you. I don't have the date right in front of me. Sorry about that. First pitch to Yannick. Downstairs, ball one. Grace, one of the taller players on the Ridgepoint squad. Now a right-handed hitter for Leal to deal with. Here's a 1-0, and she hit that high in the air down the right field line. And it's the second base player, Olivia Driscoll, who runs it down. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for both starting pitchers. Nothing on the board as we go to the second. Austin will be coming to bat again. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know. Take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything. And we mean everything. We take care of you so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. Good to see you. We're back for inning number two. Both teams in search of a base runner and Angelina Leal stands in. She'd like to stake herself to a lead. Malin Simmons rocks and brings the first pitch high and away for a ball. Leal bats 295. She's got two doubles. Two triples and three bombs on the year. She's driven in 11 runs. Her on-base percentage is 404. And she lines one into right field, but coming on and making a great catch. It's Blaine Simmons. Helping out her big sis. And not big by very much. Malin was born seven minutes before Blaine, but Blaine picks her up. Diving forward and catching that sinking liner. What a way for Tiana McFarland. Spanky batting 283 on the year. She hits right handed, open stance, swings at the first pitch and it's blooped down the right field line and it drops in for a hit. That'll be a single. First base runner of the game. You gotta hit them where they ain't and that's exactly what Tiana McFarland just did. And now we have Jenna Strong coming on to run for McFarland. Jenna Strong, by the way, according to the stats I was given today, does not have any stolen bases. But she looks like she'd be able to steal one. Zoe Zamora stands in. ZZ Top Zamora, here it comes, swings and fouls it over on the right side and rattles off the screen in front of the Austin fans. So you might be listening to us because there was no way that you could get here by five. And if so, thank you very much. It's always free to listen live and listen later on the podcast. Zamora ready for the 0-1. Swings and it's popped straight up. And the catcher couldn't find it for a second. Nobody can. Grace Yannick, the third base player, and Alexis Samine. Neither one of them got a good look at it, and Grace ran into Alexa, and uh, hopefully she doesn't have a bloody lip, but she's not coming out of this game. 
She goes right back to her spot. That was unfortunate. As soon as the ball went straight up in the air and it came down in foul territory, obviously, Samine just could not quite find it because she's the only defensive player on the field for whom the sun is a disadvantage because it's right in her eyes if she looks straight up. Here's the 0-2. Swung on, it's a slow grounder back to Simmons who underhands it over to first base and gets the out there. Two away and now it is Kenneth, uh, Jenna Strong, the pinch runner, moves over to second. Score that 1-3 and now Ashley Cook gets an opportunity to do something with a runner in scoring position. Ashley bats 375 when there's a runner out there in scoring position. 161 overall, but she comes through in the clutch and takes a strike to begin the at-bat. Another right-handed hitter. Spells her name A-S-H-L-E-E. -E. Four RBIs. She'd love to add one right here. Nothing in one. Simmons brings it. That's a strike at the knees. Sometimes there's an audible strike call, and sometimes it is... Just a raise of the right hand by the home plate umpire. Swing and a miss, and down goes Ashley Cook. That's the end of the Bulldogs threat. We will go to the bottom of the second. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one runner left on base. We'll be back with Ridge Point's next turn at bat. We'll see Alexis Samine, Reagan Green, and Nohea Anderson. <laughs> What if you made the rules? You'd probably make ice cream mandatory for breakfast. Maybe you'd decide mullets were fashionable again. And if you were in charge of your wireless plan, you'd most likely do something to save yourself a bunch of money. Well, you're in luck. Because when you get Xfinity Mobile and Internet together, you can save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. And with Xfinity Mobile, you can choose the perfect data option for each person using it. From unlimited to shared data or a mix of each. All in one plan. Hey, you're making the rules here. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile to save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63021. Restrictions apply. New performance started plus Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra, and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Wireless savings compares to averages of top providers. Xfinity Internet required. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. Alexis Samine leads off for Ridgepoint in the bottom of the second. No score between the hosting Panthers and the Austin Bulldogs. Ridgepoint run ruled the Bulldogs the first time and they've been stewing over it ever since. Samine with a crouched batting stance from the right side and she takes the first pitch in there for a strike. Reagan Green and Nohea Anderson to follow. Leal wiping the ball off against her pants leg. Here's the 0-1, and it's high for a ball. Austin wearing the black pants, the red tops with Austin in black script across the front, outlined in white, and the numerals are in white. A lot of them wearing the long sleeve black undershirts. The 1-1 is high, 2-1 now the count. On Alexis Samine, Ridgepoint without a runner so far. Base runner, I mean. Leal delivers. And the pitch catches the inside corner, two and two. Ridgepoint is wearing the home white pants and the purple and white tops. White on the shoulders. 
White numerals and letters. And there's a called strike three on the inside corner and both pitchers are hot. Three strikeouts for Leal. Up to bat for your Lady Panthers. First baseman, number 12, Reagan Green. Now Reagan Green playing first base in this ball game. And another right-handed hitter. Malin Simmons led off. She hits lefty. Everybody else hits righty. First pitch is down and in. Just missed the kneecaps of Miss Reagan Green. Ridgepoint wears the white batting helmets. They all rocks and fires. That's a that nicked her on the leg, and it's a hit by pitch. And that's the kind of hit by pitch you like. I mean, there was absolutely no pain. No Haya Anderson stands in. There's the first Ridgepoint base runner. Anderson is batting in place of Hannah Purvis, who's playing second base. First pitch to her is a ball. They all rocks and fires. Taken for a strike, as you probably heard. Here comes the 1-1. One -one. Swung on and missed, and it's now 1-2. and two. Are you craving a Dr. Pepper and wanting the creamy satisfaction of a Whataburger shake? Now you can have the best of both worlds with Whataburger's Dr. Pepper Shake. Treat yourself to one while you can. The Dr. Pepper Shake is at Whataburger only for a limited time. On one and two, Anderson fouls it back. Things are flying all over the place right now. And swinging another foul back into the screen. As Anderson is hanging in there like a rusty fish hook. All right, I'm battening down a few things because the wind seems to be picking up. Swing and a miss and finally Leal is able to do away with Nohea Anderson in her first at bat. And that is the fourth strikeout for Angelina Leal. When I think about this Austin team, I think of three players who were sophomores on the 2019 team. As the first pitch is down and away and a ball to Riley's ship. Those three sophomores in 2019, now seniors, are Jesse Shipley, Tiana McFarland, and Angelina Leal. Second pitch is also in there for a called strike. Ship ready, and looks at that one. That is a called strike. The first one was a ball, sorry about that. I thought I heard a strike call on the first pitch. Oops. Here's the one two. That's outside. No question about that one. And Ship now has a two two count. And she, by the way, is a left handed batter. They're pinching in at the corners Zamora and O'Callaghan. Here's the two two. Just missed, and Leal thought she had one there. And with good reason, I think. So with two outs and a full count, that means there's going to be a head start over there. And there is ball four. Coming to the plate for the Lady Panthers tonight's 
So Reagan Green, by the way, she's running for herself. And ship reaches on the first base on balls delivered by either pitcher in today's game. Now Blaine Simmons. And uh, I want to say that uh, I need to thank um, Anna Catherine Rosa, whose son pitches for Ridgepoint. I have a point to this story. Don't worry. Blaine Simmons ready. She's twin number two and takes a look at the first pitch outside for a ball. So the Ridgepoint girls beat Clements 19-2 on Tuesday night. Their game ended early, so they came over to Elkins to watch the rest of the baseball game between Ridgepoint and the Knights. And so I wanted to get a result on the Ridgepoint softball game, so I, during a commercial break, I called out to Anna Catherine Rosa, who was sitting with her husband, Stefan. Stand by. 1-0 pitch to Blaine Simmons, swung on and missed. That evens the count one and one. So I just said, Anna Catherine, I need somebody, uh, send one of those softball girls over here. And then everybody looked apprehensive. So I said, no, they don't need to be interviewed. I just need them to write something down. Here's the 1-1. Outside, and it's not only a ball, it trickles away from McFarland, and the runners move up. So now Reagan Green is at third, and Riley Ship is at second. So Blaine Simmons was the one who brought me the information. She wrote down that Ridgepoint won 19-2. I should have asked her who hit a home run or something like that. I, I didn't do it, but thank you, Blaine, for the nice assist. Swung on, and that would have hit me in the head if there was no net here. Wow. But, uh, you know, if my mom saw Blaine, she would say, she is just precious. Of course... She says that about just about anybody who, I don't know, doesn't have a criminal record. No, seriously. Blaine is precious. And she swings and fouls one straight back off the vinyl padding. You might have heard that thump. Most of the Ridgepoint girls, when they need to tie their hair back, they wear these lime, lime green, not exactly tennis ball green but there's this ribbon that they all seem to use Blaine bats lefty just like Malin another 2-2 pitch swings and misses at the high heat and Ridgepoint is turned away another strikeout five on the game for Leal will be back with the third inning no score between Ridgepoint and Austin What if you made the rules? You'd probably make ice cream mandatory for breakfast. Maybe you'd decide mullets were fashionable again. And if you were in charge of your wireless plan, you'd most likely do something to save yourself a bunch of money. Well, you're in luck. Because when you get Xfinity Mobile and Internet together, you can save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. And with Xfinity Mobile, you can choose the perfect data option for each person using it. From unlimited to shared data or a mix of each. All in one plan. Hey, you're making the rules here. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile to save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63021. Restrictions apply. New performance started plus Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra, and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Wireless savings compares to averages of top providers. Xfinity Internet required. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. We want to thank the team at Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace, for helping us take care of business every day as we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every single week. 1 strike on Autumn Rogers and she swings at the second pitch, fouls it back. I think that might have been ball 2 if she would have left it alone. 
Autumn Rogers, in the spring of her life, has had four RBIs on the season. Lefty hitter, and she chased a bad pitch way up high and goes down. Strikeout number one, two, three for Malin Simmons. I have a feeling that runs are going to be hard to come by today. Now Olivia Driscoll. Olivia playing second base. Right-handed hitter. Simmons rocks in, brings it right down the middle for a strike. I should say right down Waters Lake Boulevard. Driscoll batting 226, swings and fouls it off the net in front of the Austin fans on the first base side. Driscoll has scored eight runs, walked six times. Here's the pitch. She rips at it and goes down swinging. Two away. Now Alyssa Carter, who grounded out to second base her first time. Tall right-handed hitter. I didn't really notice how tall she was the first time around. Open stance. Simmons rocks in, brings it. First pitch swinging and almost gets over the net. In fact, it lands between the net and the fence, and there's no way to get to that ball unless you crawl underneath the bleachers on the first base side. I wonder if some courageous soul is going to try to pull that off. I think I hear some spikes going by behind me. I wonder who drew the short straw. Nothing and won the count on Carter. Down and in, the ball bounces into the mitt of the catcher, Alexa Samine. The outfielders playing Carter pretty much straight away. Straight away is a term that I only use in a baseball or softball context. Here's the 1-0. And that is line to left field, but right at Riley's ship, and she makes the catch. It's a 1-2-3 inning for Malin Simmons. And we'll be back with the top of the, or I should say the bottom of the third, when we return on Vipe, VipeFortBend.com. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know, take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there's one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireandAuto.com Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. All right, we have a drop dead gorgeous day here on the hard scrabble streets of Siena for this big game between Austin and Ridgepoint. Both teams trying to find a way onto the scoreboard, but Angelina Leal and Malin Simmons are both pitching one heck of a ball game. Now it is Callie Mays to lead off the Ridgepoint third. I would have gotten your more statistics on Ridgepoint, but uh, I was helping the carpet guys move furniture around and 
We really needed it. Showing drag bunt, but it goes by outside for a ball. I verbally examined the possibility if uh, Callie married a guy whose name is last name is Hayes and became Callie Mays Hayes. Swing and a foul back makes it one and one. In the movie Major League, I think it was Wesley Snipes who played the base stealing specialist Willie Mays Hayes. Callie looks up at the barrel of the bat as she spins it around in her hands. Now gets a grip. Glove on the right hand, nothing on the left hand. Takes a pitch on the outside corner and she's grimacing. I don't know if she's grimacing because of the call or if she's grimacing because she thinks she ought to have, should have taken a whack at that one. Stands in again, the lefty swinger against Leal. Just missing away and Leal with a long look in thinking maybe that was in the strike zone. She massages the softball. Eye black under her protective mask. There's a swinging bunt toward shortstop. It's gonna be close. And she beats it out. Callie Mays Hayes with an infield hit. I gotta stop thinking about the Callie Mays Hayes thing. I'm gonna keep calling her that when, when uh, I think I've done it enough already. There was nothing that Jesse Shipley could have done on that play that she didn't do. Now to the top, Malin Simmons. Struck out looking the first time. Strike, uh, no, I thought it was going to be a strike based on what I've seen so far, but it was called a ball outside. Holly Copeman, the head coach of the Austin Bulldogs, sitting on a ball bucket over there. She relays a signal to the catcher, Tiana McFarlane, who sends it on to Leal. Here's the pitch. It's high for ball two. Very favorable count for Malin Simmons. She's a bad, and I mean that in a good way, hitter. Actually, I was talking about the hair ribbon thing. As she shows bunt but pulls it back and it's a called strike. Count two and one. Her sister wears the bright tennis ball yellow color and she wears the bright green. I'd have bought a whole bunch for a St. Patrick's Day game and had some left over. Here's the two and one. Shows bunt again. Again, it's a called strike and it's two and two. Austin really, really, really needs this game and they really, really want this game because of what happened the first time when they were run ruled by the Panthers. Here's the 2-2. It's high, the count is full. A bluff move by Callie Hayes who's leading off of first. She got an infield hit out of a slow roller toward short. Simmons ready. And she takes it outside for ball four and she's on base for the first time. Both base runners are pretty fast and Jade Uresti will come up. She was a strikeout victim her first time. Lefty swinger with the yellow gloves that kind of look like my dad's old work gloves. And she bunts between the mound and home. Nobody there covering, or oh, now there is. Olivia Driscoll came over to get the underhand toss from Angelina Leal. The sacrifice bunt works to perfection. And now Grace Yannick will come up with two runners in scoring position. Number 16, Grace Yannick. Again, score that one to four for the first out. And 
And here's the first pitch to Yannick. She takes it on the outside corner for a strike. Grace popped up to the second base player, Olivia Driscoll of Hurst time. Open stance, right-handed batter, front of the box. Here's the 0-1, shows bunt, puts it down, but it trickles into foul territory. Alexis Samine waits to bat next. This is a day where if you're a fan, you've got to have the shades, but if you're a player, not necessarily. The 0-2 outside, Yannick takes. One and two. Jeff Blum has talked about when you're when he was playing baseball, putting on shades just made his eyes a half a click off and he couldn't operate that way, so he never wore them during his playing days. Yannick fouled one off in the count one and two. Trying to get Ridge Point on the board for the first time. Here's the one two. It's high, two and two. I was gonna get the temperature for you. I mean, it just could not be any more beautiful than it is. Pitch popped up in the air, but it'll get over the screen and land on aluminum. I love when that happens. It's a beautiful sound. It means ball players are busy. 72 degrees, very, very light wind, bright, bright sunshine. As James Earl Jones said in the movie Field of Dreams, uh, what did he say? Something like, so never mind. I'll work on that for the next game. Here's the 2 2, and a check swing fouled away. This is the first real scoring threat of the afternoon. By the way, this game starting at five o'clock makes me think of what the TV networks think about. I'll share some inside sports casting for you. Here's the 2-2. It's a high fly ball to center field and it's carrying and it drops in the left center field gap. That will score Mays and it will score Malin Simmons. Here's the throw and Malin gets in. And by the way, that was an awesome throw out there by Trichelle, Trichelle Esquivel. She almost got it in in time to make a play. I guess Simmons had to stay on second until she was sure that the ball was gonna drop. But it's a double for Yannick. Ridgepoint has something going here. Now right-handed hitting Alexis Samine. Struck out looking in inning number two. Open stance from the right-handed box. Leal brings it in there for a strike. We turned up the volume a little bit for you. Second pitch looked pretty good, but it's ball one. Alexa wears number seven. Still only one out and a runner at second. That's Yannick. She just drove in two of them. Two to nothing, Ridge Point. And the home plate umpire lets everybody know verbally that there are two balls and two strikes, even though the scoreboard says one and two. And it's a ground ball back through the middle into center field for a base hit. Yannick comes around and scores to make it three to nothing, Ridge Point. Alexis Samine, RBI single. And now there's gonna be a mound conference. Holly Copeman coming out to talk to Angelina Leal. This is not usually what's happened when she pitches because she has that ERA of 3.20, but here in the third inning, she's already given up three, a runner on and only one away. We'll be back after this from the Office Depot.
We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com. Now, Reagan Green comes up to try to continue this rally. She was hit by a pitch the first time, but it was no pain whatsoever. It just grazed the front of her left thigh. First pitch, she checks and gets a piece of it. It goes to the backstop, nothing in one. And on that pitch, looked like Alexis Amine was ready to run. So talking about the daylight factor, when you start a game at five o'clock, sometimes it's tough if you're looking into the sun, but if it's on TV, wow, that's when a game looks really, really good. Second pitch comes in and it's a ball, one and one on Reagan Green. The network people like to call that magic time. You start the game in sunlight, but as the game progresses, you go through dusk and then it's dark near the end. Looks great on TV. Swing as the runner moves and it's fouled out of play on the right. So I think about Super Bowls. Back to Super Bowl XI played in January of 1977. The Vikings lost to the Raiders in the Rose Bowl and that's the last Super Bowl that was begun and ended in sunlight. Now the one-two. Swing and a grounder towards first, but it trickles foul, and on the move was Alexis Samine. The very next year after the Raiders beat the Vikings in that Super Bowl XI, the Cowboys beat the Broncos in the Superdome. That was January of 78, and that was the first indoor Super Bowl. The one-two pitch is high, two and two. Samine starts, but goes back. So ever since then, the Super Bowl has started at about 4.30 or so central time in the afternoon. They all trying to work out of trouble here, down three to nothing. All three runs have scored here in the bottom of the third. The 2-2, it's high. McFarlane stood up and looked like she wanted to make a throw down to first base. And now McFarlane calls timeout and she wants to go out and talk to her pitcher. Now, I know most of you know this, but just for those that don't know the, the intricate rules of softball, you don't get to take a lead off, and so pickoff throws are just not necessary, not part of the game. So you basically have base runners, as Samine is doing right now, using the first base bag kind of like a starting block in track and field. Reagan Green ready, takes a mighty hack, but it's just a dribbler foul on the left side. She steps out, looks over at Coach Lindsey Gage. Gets the sign, we've got a 3-2 pitch coming. Leal brings it, and it's a ball down and in, and that pushes Samine over to second. So Reagan Green hasn't had to swing the bat at all to get on. She's been hit by a pitch and she has walked. Nohea Anderson who struck out her first time around. And Ridgepoint has been selective with their swings and fought off some strikes and is having a lot better luck against Leal the second time around. Angelina brings the next one. That pitch is high for a ball. Austin does not want to play innings four through seven. Well, they don't want to play from behind at all, but they certainly don't want to play with a big deficit. And there's a soft liner past first base and everybody's gonna be safe. It's a single, there was a lot of, I guess, counterclockwise spin on that one that moved the ball away from Charlotte O'Callaghan. Another hit for Ridgepoint. 
So Nohea Anderson is on. Reagan Green is at second. And Alexis Samine is at third. And now Riley Ship comes up. Okay, just a second. Yeah, we've got a courtesy runner. Coming in is Kyla Correa, and she is going to run for Reagan Green at second base. We still have only one out, and Angelina Leal is just trying to get herself and the rest of the defense off the field, but Ridge Point has three runs in already, and the bases are loaded with one away. Ship ready. Looks at the first pitch, down and away. She walked in inning number two. Leal looks in, brings the next one. Strike on the outside corner. Riley Ship, the eighth hitter for Ridgepoint in this inning. The 1-1, one, one, and she fouls it back. I would say good luck to the Houston Cougars, but I'd also say good luck to the Baylor Bears in the college basketball semifinal for the men on Saturday. As that pitch is low, and it's 2-2. Two and two. And I don't know if you heard it, but the Ridge Point girls making a lot of noise in the dugout. They said good eye. And they will do whatever they need to do to rattle Angelina Leal. It's been a tough third inning. Here's the pitch. Just outside for ball three. And I think Leal is getting a little bit frustrated. She walks out the back side of the pitcher's circle. Tapping her right toe, and she's got to bring one here. Three and two. No place to put the batter, Riley Ship, and it's a called strike three. She got what she needed. Six strikeouts for Leal, and that's good, but she's down three nothing, which is not. And the ninth Ridge Point player to bat in this inning, Blaine Simmons, strikeout victim in her first at bat. Here's the first pitch to her, takes it outside, and McFarlane reaches over, makes a nice catch to be certain that no one was going to come home from third. That's Alexis Semine running off the third base bag. Layall rocks and fires. Check swing. Did she go around? And they appeal to the infield umpire, and he says no, no swing. Simmons digs in from the left-handed batter's box. Here it comes, swings and misses at a pitch out of the strike zone. It's two and one. Leal concentrating, she is focused. She needs to get out of this inning and quick. Swing and a miss. Blaine couldn't catch up to that one. And Leal is one strike away from getting out of this big mess with nothing worse than a three to nothing deficit. Here's the pitch and it's high. The count will go full and the runners will break as soon as the ball crosses home plate. In softball, the merry-go-round starts, but just not quite as quickly as in baseball. The pitch, and it's outside ball four. Another run comes in. Now Callie Mays, who singled and scored the first Ridge Point run. That was in this inning, obviously. 
So this is where I have to scratch out the four and make another number three at the top of the third column of my scorebook. Four to nothing, Ridge Point on top, Leal brings it. And strike one to the number nine hitter, Callie Mays. Leal with a deep breath. She's a senior. And throws a strike on the outside corner. And she knows it can be a long game. She is keeping her composure, even though things haven't been going her way here in the bottom of the third. Mays ready. Leal going back to Callie with the fastball, and she swings and misses. That will do it. But 10 Ridgepoint Panther batters come to the plate. Actually, nine different ones, and Callie Mays was up twice. And they come up with four runs, and we'll see how Austin responds in the top of the fourth when we return on VipeFortBend.com. <laughs> What if you made the rules? You'd probably make ice cream mandatory for breakfast. Maybe you'd decide mullets were fashionable again. And if you were in charge of your wireless plan, you'd most likely do something to save yourself a bunch of money. Well, you're in luck. Because when you get Xfinity Mobile and Internet together, you can save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. And with Xfinity Mobile, you can choose the perfect data option for each person using it. From unlimited to shared data or a mix of each. All in one plan. Hey, you're making the rules here. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile to save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63021. Restrictions apply. New performance started plus Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Wireless savings compares to averages of top providers. Xfinity Internet required. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com. We want to thank the team at Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland for taking care of business and helping us do just that. Taking care of business every day so we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. Esquivel puts down a bunt right back to Simmons on the first pitch of the top of the fourth and Simmons throws her out quickly. There was uh, nothing about that that surprised Melin Simmons who was on it like a pit bull on a poodle. Jesse Shipley now struck out looking the first time around. I know how competitive she is. That does not sit well with her. Malin brings the first pitch and it's high and away. Shipley slugging at 1.077. Anything over one is pretty intergalactically good. The 1-0 pitch is down and away, 2 and nothing. Jesse was awesome as a sophomore, didn't get to show how awesome she was as a junior, and here it is. She does not want to win, uh, lose her last matchup with Ridgepoint. The 2-0 is in there. Shipley to be followed by Angelina Leal. Here's the pitch. Outside. And it's 3-1, and one, a very favorable count. It was good to see Jesse's dad, Billy Shipley. Such a proud Austin parent. Here's the 3-1. And it's high, and Shipley is on with a walk. Probably a good idea for Malin Simmons to pitch Shipley carefully. But now you've got Angelina Leal. She hit the ball hard her first time. 
It was a line drive to right field. 295 hitter, 404 on base percentage. Two doubles, two triples, and three home runs. 11 runs driven in. First pitch to her is hard. Pass short, stopping into center field, and Shipley is going to stop at second base. So Leal with a solid single. Shipley at second, and maybe the Bulldogs have a little something going. But they didn't get much out of their the bottom of their lineup the first time through. So that's what you have to watch out for. Can they keep the line moving with the hitters after McFarland, who singled down the right field line her first trip? Simmons steps up onto the river or the rubber. Here's the pitch. And it's high for a ball. No threat of rain, nothing but bright sunshine, 72 degrees. Wind blowing out a little bit. McFarland takes and it's down and in and Malin Simmons not throwing as many strikes this inning as she had before. She massages the ball. Steps back up there, ready to deliver the 2-0. McFarland rips it, but it's right at the left fielder, Alyssa Carter. Correction, I didn't turn my card over. Riley Ship, sorry about that, Riley. You deserve better. Two away. Man, that's tough to take when you just sting the ball, as McFarland just did, and you get nothing to show for it. So Shipley still at second, Leal still at first, and now Zoe Zamora. Open stance, bounced in with a pitch, and Malin Simmons down nothing, uh, one and nothing. I wonder if Zoe was named after that uh, that Muppet, you know, really sweet little orange girl, Zoe. And there's a ground ball toward shortstop, no problem for you, Resty. Flips to second. That will do it for the Dogs here in the top of the fourth inning. They threaten but don't score, and we'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Ridge point four, Austin nothing. Getagreatgig.com presents Gary Horn of Hornsolutions.net on the most important factors in starting a business. Number one, where will you get the necessary capital? Two, you will probably not make money for some period of time. Prepare a conservative model of expected cost and revenues. Three, are you willing to work long hours for no pay and make sure all employees are paid? For more free career and job search advice, log on to Getagreatgig.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn, CEO of Horn Solutions. Our team of experienced accounting, finance, and IT professionals have delivered solutions to Houston businesses for over three decades. Our project group provides services ranging from assisting with mergers, acquisitions, and integrations to interim staffing. Our executive search group provides full-time placements for accounting, finance, and IT positions. Let Horn Solutions help you meet the challenges your company faces. Visit hornsolutions.net. We hope everybody has a happy Easter. We hope the bunny is good to you. And when I think of bunnies and baseball, I think of the home ballpark of the Dulles Vikings because it seems like you play one of those seven o'clock start games, the twilight is coming down, it's a nice evening. Usually there's a little brown bunny rabbit that hops onto the field and it always makes everybody laugh. But we do have some disappointing news for the Dulles Vikings. They have, because of COVID cases, had to put their baseball season on hold. And so I got the information from head coach Matthew Warren to tell me about when they will make up the games that they won't be able to play during this quarantine. And that's good news for you Austin fans because when Austin... Austin and Dulles play the game that we would not have been able to broadcast otherwise we will be able to bring it to you I think it's going to be on a Saturday Austin was going to play a non-district game against Kempner 
but the district games have to get played. So instead of Austin versus Kempner on a Saturday pretty soon, it'll be Austin against Dulles in baseball. First pitch from Leal to Malin Simmons is in there for a strike. Not my style, said Malin, to be followed by Uresti and Yannick. Leal rocks and fires. Just missed the outside corner. Malin stands in. Rests the bat on the shoulder. Now has it poised. The 1-1 on the way and she fouls and it goes back and to her left. Ridge Point with four runs on four hits and all of those hits came in the third. Two hits for the Bulldogs who haven't gotten on the board yet. And the one-two pitch is outside two and two now to Malin Simmons. She played in right field as a freshman on a team that went three rounds deep into the playoffs. The 2-2 two -two pitch is down and away. The count goes full on Malin. The count is full. Leal shrugs the shoulders, gets loose. Ready to bring the payoff pitch. Swung on, and it's a soft liner to the third base, and it's gloved by Zoe Zamora. ZZ Top, and that'll do it for the at bat of Malin Simmons. Jade Uresti. By the way, what I remember about that 2019 Ridge Point girls softball team is that they won against Cypress Creek in a game played in the rain. I think it was at Maid Creek. I think that's where it was. Here's the pitch. And it's a strike to Uresti. She struck out in the first, but laid down a perfect sacrifice bunt in the third, part of that four-run rally. Leal delivers, down and away, one and one. So Ridge Point, which was heavily favored over Cy Creek, had gone to its last at bat. And I think it was two outs, bases empty. I'm not sure. They were down by a run. Here's the 1-1. Uresti swings and fights it off. Goes foul on the left side. And Taylor Roman came up. And she cranked one over the fence. All of a sudden, the game was tied. And before you could, con could come down from that excitement, Maggie Dar stepped in and delivered another solo shot. And that ended the game. Ureste took the last pitch, and it's two and two. Lefty swinger, Leal working. Here comes the two two. It's high, and the count goes full for the second batter in this inning. But when you are talking about a softball pitcher, you don't really worry so much about pitch counts. You don't have to spread the load around. Leal ready to bring the 3 2. It's high for ball four. So, for example, I mean, you can go to uh, any Class 6A baseball pitching staff, and you will see that through tournament play and about halfway through district play, they will have used at least eight pitchers on a baseball team. But for Austin, not that uncommon. They've only used two. It's Angelina Leal and Zoe Zamora. They are the only ones to have thrown a pitch for Austin during this season. So we have a pinch runner now. It's Alan Keaton. And she's at first base running for Jade Uresti. Speaking of Keaton, I've enjoyed watching Family Ties reruns lately. First pitch on the inside corner for a strike to Yannick. 
popped up to second, but then had a big double in that four-run third. Grace is ready. Leal brings it. That's on the outside corner. A little bit of a change up. Took a little something off of it. One out. Runner at first base. And that is Keaton running for Uresti. Yannick with the open stance. She's ready. Takes a pitch low over the plate, but low, and it's two, uh, one and two. Scoreboard says it's one and two. I'm not sure. Grace is ready. Swings and misses at another changeup, and down she goes. Second out of the inning now, Alexis Samine. One for two with a single in the third. Samine with that deep crouch. The first pitch is down and in for a ball. Leal walks to the back of the mound again. Gets some instructions from the dugout. Now brings the 1-0. It's down and in for ball two. I got to see Samine's family on the way in. They made it by five, but a lot of people didn't, and that's just the way it goes. Here's a strike on the outside corner. It's two and one. The noise is picking up, which we like. Everybody sounded a little sedated early on. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Swing and a foul back. So Ridgepoint and Austin, probably both playoff bound, although there are a lot of games between now and the end of the season, but they're both looking up at George Ranch and Travis. 2-2 on the way, and it's high. And Keaton started from first base, but went back. She will take off as soon as the ball crosses home plate because it's three and two with two outs. Here's the pitch. And it's a ground ball into left field for a base hit. A hot smash past Zamora and Keaton's gonna try for third, she's out. It happened right in front of the Ridgepoint dugout and they don't like the call, but it doesn't matter that they didn't like the call. The fourth inning is over. Ridgepoint comes up with no runs on two hits. No, I'm sorry, one hit, no error, and one runner left on base. We'll be back on BiteFortBend.com. What if you made the rules? You'd probably make ice cream mandatory for breakfast. Maybe you'd decide mullets were fashionable again. And if you were in charge of your wireless plan, you'd most likely do something to save yourself a bunch of money. Well, you're in luck. Because when you get Xfinity Mobile and Internet together, you can save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. And with Xfinity Mobile, you can choose the perfect data option for each person using it. From unlimited to shared data or a mix of each. All in one plan. Hey, you're making the rules here. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile to save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63021. Restrictions apply. New performance started plus Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra, and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Wireless savings compares to averages of top providers. Xfinity Internet required. Alon Keaton comes in after running on the base path. She did get gunned down at third base, but she is now in playing shortstop. Keaton spells her name K-E-E-T-O-N, and that's different from the family ties 
Keaton family. Could you name all the members of the family? Well, I'm going to start with mom, Elise. The dad was Stephen. The oldest child, of course, Alex, played by Michael J. Fox. And then his, his beautiful but slightly ditzy sister, Mallory. And then there was little Jennifer. And as the show went along, they had a fourth kid. And that was, uh, what was that kid's name? I'll come up with it. First pitch of this top of the fifth inning is to Ashley Cook. And now I just figured something out. I figured out that my good buddy of so many years, Dan Cook, that's his daughter. Ashley Cook, of course. How could I miss that? Swing and a miss. It's 0-2. Ashley has a twin sister named Amber. And their big sister, Faith, was a great athletic trainer for Austin. Actually, still is, I think, because... I believe she's a senior this year, but Ashley goes down on strikes. One away, and now Autumn Rogers, the DH, 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Lefty swinger, doesn't wear batting gloves. Malin Simmons pitching in this game like she's in a rocking chair. Here it comes. Strike on the outside corner, and I think Blue told you that it was a strike. Malin rubs up the ball as Ridgepoint trying to improve to 7-2 and two in district play. Check swing, down and away, 1-1. One and one. Rogers is batting in place of Charlotte O'Callaghan, who's at first base. Olivia Driscoll due to bat next. On the outside corner, 1-2. and two. So if Malin Simmons can keep Bulldogs off the base paths, then maybe she'll only see the top of the Bulldog order one more time and a weak swing at that next pitch. And down goes Autumn Rogers. Olivia Driscoll was a strikeout victim her first time. First pitch to her is grounded to deep short. Keaton up with it, throws across, and it's not in time. Infield hit for Olivia Driscoll with two outs. Well, Keaton did everything she could there, but just no way to throw out Driscoll, who runs pretty well. Now Alyssa Carter, and if she can get on, Trishel Esquivel. Carter is 0 for 2, but hit it hard her last time. It was a liner to left. Outside for a ball. And I see that uh, Keaton and Purvis are pinching in behind Simmons on return throws. They don't trust Olivia Driscoll to not run. Here's a pitch that's down low. 2 and nothing. the count on Carter. The table setter for the dogs trying to get something done here. Her team is down four to nothing. Carter ready, here's the pitch. Takes it high for a ball and a throw down to first but easily back in is Driscoll. Sun going down behind those houses beyond the outfield fence, and it will make it a little harder to spot pitches. There's a strike at the letters, and a little shake of the head from Carter. She didn't think so. Puts the hand up. Now she's ready. The next one will be the 3-1. Here it comes. And it's to right center field, but it'll hang up for Callie Mays. She's got it, and Austin is turned away one more time. For them in the top of the fifth, no runs on one hit, no errors, and two runners left on base, or one runner, actually. Sorry about that. 
And we'll be back with the bottom of the fifth, Ridgepoint leading four to nothing. From the Three Musketeers. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know. Take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com What if you made the rules? You'd probably make ice cream mandatory for breakfast. Maybe you'd decide mullets were fashionable again. And if you were in charge of your wireless plan, you'd most likely do something to save yourself a bunch of money. Well, you're in luck. Because when you get Xfinity Mobile and Internet together, you can save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. And with Xfinity Mobile, you can choose the perfect data option for each person using it. From unlimited to shared data or a mix of each. All in one plan. Hey, you're making the rules here. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile to save up to $300 a year on your wireless bill. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63021. Restrictions apply. New performance started plus internet customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Wireless savings compares to averages of top providers. Xfinity Internet required. Reagan Green leads off for Ridgepoint in control thus far, leading four to nothing, batting in the bottom of the fifth. For those of you in Rio Linda, these games go seven innings, unless we need extra innings. Alexis Samine finished off the fourth inning with a single, but Keaton was trying to go from first to third on that hit, and she was thrown out at third base. And the first pitch to Reagan Green is ball one from Angelina Leal. Righty working to righty. And that's a one hopper to third base. No trouble for the Bulldogs' Zoe Zamora. Easy play and one away. Now Noah Hea Anderson. Did, let's see. I gave her four syllables. It should be three. No Hea, not Noah Hea. She's one for two with a single. Right-handed hitter. Leal still out there chucking for Austin. First pitch inside corner. Missed. I thought it was in there. I just should not anticipate. Eight. The 1 0 to Nohea just missed the inside corner and it's two and nothing. Anderson rests the bat on the shoulder until it's time to bring it up. Now she lowers her crouch. And looks at a pitch high and away in the count three and nothing. And will she get the green light from Coach Lindsey Gage? 70 degrees in Missouri City. It has cooled off from 72 at first pitch. Here's the 3-0 taken all the way in there for a strike. She steps out, takes a slow practice swing. Digs in and Leal brings it. Foul straight back and a healthy hack at that one. I heard Tiana McFarland, her catcher, calling out to Angie. Angelina Leal brings the 3 2, swung on and missed. And there are two outs. Eight strikeouts for Leal. 
Riley Ship was once a strikeout victim in the third, but she walked and reached second in the second. And she takes the first pitch outside for a ball. I guess uh, there could be some confusion. You got Ship for Ridgepoint and Shipley for Austin. And people call Shipley Ship. Second pitch is outside, two and nothing. And Leal looked over at the dugout. One of her coaches told her a little something, something. She'll put it into practice. Here goes the 2 0. High ball three. She got behind Anderson 3 0 and fought back to strike her out. See what she does with Ship. Strike on the outside corner. That's step one. We're going to take Good Friday off and no baseball at all on Easter weekend, and we'll be back with you for a full diet of games next week. There's a strike on the outside corner. Ship didn't think so, but she doesn't respond in any demonstrative way. There's the 3 2, and it's on the ground foul to the third base side. So next week on Tuesday, it's Dulles at Ridgepoint. We'll be right back here for softball on Tuesday at 6. Wednesday at 7, we'll go to Travis for Ridgepoint at Travis. Undefeated in district, Ridgepoint against once beaten Travis. Swinging another foul ball by Ship, fighting it off real nicely. We will take Thursday night off next week, but then we'll have Foster at Kempner baseball on Friday night and then softball on Saturday afternoon, Foster at Kempner. Just off the outside corner with another 3-2 pitch and thought she was going to have a clean inning maybe, but Angelina Leal walks ship. Now Blaine Simmons. Blaine Simmons. Struck out in the second, walked in the third, and made a great diving catch of a sinking liner in right field early in this game that might have established some momentum for these Panthers. And they lead it four to nothing as they bat in the bottom of the fifth. She started to go after the first one, but watched it sail outside. One and nothing on Blaine. Seven minutes younger than Malin. The pitch started to go on that one. Did not pull the trigger, but as you probably heard, call a strike on the outside corner. Simmons is ready for the 1-1, and she lifts it in the air. It's going to go foul on the left side. Beyond everybody. Everybody craning their necks. Well, it's April, and that means we're going to have the Masters, and it'll be when it should happen. You know, in April, they played the 2020 Masters in November. That just didn't seem right. Here's the one-two, and an excuse me swing, and it goes into foul territory. Leal taking a little more time between pitches. Has a new softball. Ready to bring the one-two. Trying to finish off the bottom of the fifth. Here it comes. Check swing. She did go around. Strike three. And it is strikeout number nine for Leal. But the number that really matters is the four on the scoreboard. That's what Ridgepoint has. And Austin still trying to get out of this shutout mode. We'll be back on VipeFortBend.com. 
First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know. Take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTyronAuto.com. Hi, I'm back. I was running a commercial and I think the commercial just stuck or something. We may be rolling commercial free the rest of the evening. Yeah, I've seen this happen. Uh, this little this little feature on my laptop where I play the commercials, if it just quits, it's it quits and you can't even exit off the screen and then turn it back on. So it's happened before and it just happened again. Okay. Well, I hope you don't mind us rolling commercial free. All right. Austin's got to do something. Two more at bats and here. Down and in with that one to, uh, let's see. I'm, okay, it's Trishel Esquivel. That's who I thought it was, but I just had to make sure of the jersey number. Should have trusted my scorebook. 1-0 count to her, and the second pitch is high. Lots of noise coming out of the Austin dugout. Teammates trying to inspire their hitters. Esquivel with two ground ball outs. Malin Simmons pitching a magnificent game. She's only given up three hits. There's a big rip and a miss by Esquivel, and it's two and one. Simmons doesn't have as many strikeouts as Leal, but she's up on the scoreboard four to nothing, but there is a base hit up the middle. Esquivel with a textbook swing, nice short stroke, and right into center field. And now here is the straw that stirs the drink. Jesse Shipley, she struck out and walked. Again, we got a wind blowing out toward left field. Simmons does not look the least bit flustered, ready to bring the first one to Shipley, and it's high for a ball and a throw down to first. Swipe tag by Green is too late to get Esquivel. And a ball got loose, or they want a new ball, that's it. I guess that's one of the things about baseball. The umpire can wear a pouch around his or her waist and carry a lot of baseballs. Uh, but, you know, you just can't do that with softballs. They're too big. Here's the 1-0. Shipley takes, and it's a strike on the outside corner. Shipley steps out, takes a deep breath, gets ready for the 1-1. Here it comes. Big rip, but she fouls it back, and it's 1-2. and two. By the way, you shake hands with Jesse, and uh, she'll let you know how strong she is. She does not need to get a grip. She's really got a good one. Here's the 1-2. Outside, two and two. Ship we, uh, ship we. <laughs> Sound like Mrs. Biden. Shipley. Ready for the two, two. Oh my goodness, it's a called strike three and it looked like it was just simply outside. It couldn't have been in the strike zone. But it's the first out. Now Angelina, I guess I'll, I heard the announcer and her catcher call her Angie. I'm going to go with that. Angie, you can't say we never tried. Here's the pitch. Outside for a ball. By the way, on that, that uh, strike three pitch to Shipley, Esquivel went to second. 
So she's there with one out. Leal ready. Swing and a foul back behind the press box. And it's one and one. Leal hits 333 with runners in scoring position. And Esquivel is out there at second. She would love to run all the way home. I don't mean to Pheasant Creek. I mean to home plate. Here's the 1-1. Big rip. Leal was trying to go yard and she fouled it straight back. Tiana McFarland waiting to bat next. Here's the one two. And another great rip, but she fouls it straight back again. Leal steps out, visualizing the ideal swing, steps back in. Ready for the one, two. Change up in the dirt, and that's gonna end up with a runner at third. It got away from, from the catcher, Samine, and she threw down to third, but Yannick applied the tag too late. Well, the throw was too late. One out and a runner at third. Here's the 2-2. And it's high in the air on the infield. It'll be Yannick calling for it. And she drops it. Everybody's safe. Oh, my goodness. Yannick had to run all the way from third. And it seems like maybe that should have been Samine's ball or maybe Simmons' ball, but neither one of them called for it. Yannick had to take over. And that'll be an E5. And Austin now with a little bit of hope. Now the Ridge Point infield gets together, just players, saying, hey, we got this. But Tiana McFarland ready to step into the box, and uh, she might think, well, we'll see about that. Spanky is one for two with a second inning single. Puts up her hands, she's got heavy tape around the ring and middle fingers of her right hand and a black glove on the left. Here's the first pitch and it's in there for a strike. McFarland in her third year as a varsity starter for the Bulldogs. Ready for the 0-1. That's outside, one and one. Ridgepoint fans thinking maybe it was a strike. Panthers leading it four to nothing. Critical district game. It's the top of the sixth. The visiting Bulldogs are batting. One out, runners at the corners. McFarland ready. Rips and fouls it back. Simmons is bringing the heat. They've been able to take those big, stream, uh, big swings and make just enough contact to foul it into the net. And this is not cricket, so that doesn't help. Here's the one, two. And it's a ground ball under the second baseman, Purvis. One run scores. And the dogs are on the board. It's four to one. That'll be an E4. McVarland hit it right at Purvis. On the play, um, Esquivel scores, and Leal gets to second base. And now it'll be Zoe Zamora, who's grounded out twice. And Lindsey Gage, head coach of Ridgepoint, goes out, and they have a little mound visit. All right, uh, we have a courtesy runner. It is Angelina Lamb in to run. She 
She's at first base running for McFarland, and now Zoe Zamora. Big time swings, and it's a little looper towards second base. It drops in, but they're going to get a force out at third base. And an almost double play, but now a throwaway. No, it's backed up nicely by Blaine Simmons in right field. Okay, so that is a fielder's choice. Zamora reaches, and Leal is thrown out at third base. The play goes 6-5 to five because, well, uh, Uresti picked it up. It had a funny spin to it. There's really nothing that, um, that Leal could do. She had to make sure it wasn't caught before she can advance. But by the time it hit the ground, it made it an easy play. Uresti to Yannick at third. Now runners first and second with two outs, and it's up to Ashley Cook. First pitch swinging, and it's a swing and a miss for a strike. Actually, it's not Ashley Cook. We have us a, a pinch hitter. It's Jenna Strong. Jenna Strong pinch hitting for Ashley Cook. Open stance. And she taps it down the third base line. Foul, and she's down 0-2. Jenna came on as a courtesy runner earlier. And Simmons brings the 0-2. Swing and a miss. That ends the inning. The dogs get a run. But that's all. And we'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Ridge Point on top of Austin, 4-1. to one. And uh, like I said before, we have this little malfunction with the thing that plays the commercials. And so we're rolling commercial free. This VibeFortBend.com presentation of Fort Bend County Softball is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity is a proud supporter of Fort Bend and Greater Houston High School sports on VipeFortBend.com. With the new Xfinity Sports Zone app, watch multiple games at once and check live stats and scores while watching another game. It's the best sports entertainment experience with Xfinity X1. And by First Tire and Automotive, make sure your vehicles are in shape for the spring. First Tire and Automotive has locations in First Colony, Greatwood, Katy Cinco Ranch, and on Eldridge Road in Sugarland. All four of them are open on Saturdays, even Easter weekend Saturday. For the best prices on tires, go to firsttireandauto.com. We also want to thank the team at Office Depot in Sugarland for helping us take care of business. Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace, takes care of business every day. So VipeFortBend.com can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. If you are traveling on Easter weekend, please do be careful. And remember, if you're taking a long trip, you can go to the VipeFortBend.com podcasts. You can listen to this game. You can listen to the Ridgepoint Panthers baseball victory on Tuesday night over Elkins, where Justin Vossis hit a two-run homer. And let's see, what else did we do? I've got uh, records of all the, the games that we've done. So we had Clements play Elkins on March 23rd. Elkins won that one. We had Travis at Clements on Friday, March 26th. You can listen to that one on the podcast. Then we had a Saturday game as the Terry Rangers out of Rosenberg beat Kempner by a score of 6-5. to five. And you can go back even farther than that. You can go back to the basketball season, to volleyball, and football, of course. Now Callie Mays. All right, I'm just updating my scorebook. That's why I got quiet there. One run on one hit, two errors, and two runners left on for the Bulldogs when they put together that mini rally in the sixth. And the first pitch from Leal to Ridgepoint's Callie Mays. 
is a ball. Callie has singled and struck out, came around to score a run in the third. There's a pitch that just misses the outside corner and it's two and nothing. And now there's a timeout as Coach Holly Copeman wants to make a defensive change. Ashley Cook is coming out and Jenna Strong will go to right field. Callie Mays, left-handed hitter, to be followed by Malid, uh, Malin Simmons and Jade Uresti. Here's the 2-0, and a swinging bunt, but it goes foul on the left side. The corner infielders, Charlotte O'Callaghan and Zoe Zamora, pinching in a little bit. Here's the 2-1, and it's bunted in the air, but it spins, it lands foul, and then spins even farther foul. While we have a moment waiting for everybody to go back to their positions, uh, doesn't Charlotte O'Callaghan sound like a book character name? Or maybe the name of, uh, of an establishment for adults. Charlotte O'Callaghan's. Here's the 2-2, check swing, and it goes over to the Ridgepoint dugout. And a couple of chuckles there as Callie Mays, what are you trying to do, injure your teammates? Sending a wicked line shot over there into the dugout? Which is silly, of course, but it's fun. Nobody got hurt. Angie Leal ready, brings it. And it's a weak grounder back to Leal, backhands it, throws, not in time. Nice hustle by Callie Mays. I'm not going to give her the extra last name, but she was motoring. Because of the 5 o'clock start, there was no concession service, and that's a shame. Now that I mentioned the fictitious Charlotte O'Callaghan's, uh, I'm feeling a little thirsty. <laughs> Now Malin Simmons struck out, walked and scored, and hit a line drive to third base and takes the first pitch for a strike. She showed bunt for a nanosecond there. Leal working to her pitching counterpart. Here comes the 0-1, bunted toward third. Nice scoop over there by Zamora, but the throw goes past first base. They're gonna be runners at second and third. Jenna Strong gets it back in. O'Callahan throws back to second, safe there. And a flurry of activity results in two Panthers getting into scoring position. So I'm going to give uh, Malin a hit on that one. I think she was about to beat the throw to first base, despite the fact that Zamora just jumped all over it and scooped the bunt, I don't know, about a third of the way from home to third. That's where she scooped it. She got rid of it immediately. But Simmons beat it out, and now it's Jade Uresti. Oh, correction. Actually, it's a bunt attempt going foul on the right. And they brought in Alon Keaton. She's batting for the first time. And she came in and she's playing shortstop now. And she's in the spot in the batting order that had been occupied by Jade Uresti. 0-1, nobody out. Runner second and third. And a bunt back to Leal, looks the runner back to third, throws to first and gets the out, and then the return throw home is wild, and two runs come home. Six to one, Ridgepoint. Well, I think Leal did what she had to do. You know, she looked the runner back to third. She threw to first and got the out. But after that, it just went 
went uh, downhill for the dogs. So they got that run back in the top of the sixth. Now they give up two in the bottom of the sixth. So to wrap up the scoring on that one, Keaton was out and it went one to three to get the out. But then you had, let's see, it was an error on the first base player, Charlotte O'Callaghan. She threw home and it airmailed over the catcher. Tiana McFarland, nothing that she could do. So it's six to one, only one out. The bases are empty now. And here is Grace Yannick. Popped up double and scored. And was a strikeout victim one time. Squares to bunt, puts it down, coming on to get it. Got to hurry. And safe at first base. The second base player, Olivia Driscoll, was covering, and she looks a little incredulous. I think the throw might have gotten Yannick, but it's another infield hit. I don't think there have been any hits in this inning. There are three for Ridgepoint, but none that have left the infield. Now Alexis Samine with a runner at first. Up and in for a ball. Ridgepoint keeping the offensive pressure on and there will be a big mountain to climb for Austin when they bat in the top of the seventh. Leal brings it, bounces in, gets away from McFarland and Yannick turns second, holds on there. So another opportunity with a runner in scoring position. Samayan is two for three with a pair of singles. Right-handed hitter, open stance, Leal delivers, and it is ripped down the left field line, but foul by a couple of feet. And it'll take a moment to get everybody back into their spots. Alexis Samine stands back in with a two and one count. Grace Yannick at second base. Here's the pitch. In there for a strike. Leal brought the fastball, walks to the back of the pitcher's circle, steps back up. And Samine stepped off and then back on like the subway was about to leave. Ready for the 2 2. High in the air on the infield. And it's going to be Shipley calling for it. She makes the catch right between the mound and third. Or I guess I should say the pitcher's circle and third. Two away. Now batting for the Lady Panthers. First baseman, number 12, Reagan Green. Now Reagan Green. She's gotten on base a couple of times and got hit by a pitch once, but it just barely grazed her. She walked another time. Her most recent appearance in the sixth. She grounded out to third base. Swing and a miss. Actually, that was the fifth because I had to use two columns, you know, for the third, and that bumped everything over. So Reagan with two outs. Grace Yonick still at second. Swing and a miss. She was trying to go downtown with that one. There's a really nice neighborhood beyond the outfield fence, but coyotes used to live back there. I mean the four-footed kind. Here's the 0-2. Called strike three, and down goes Reagan Green, but Ridgepoint picks up a couple of runs, and Austin's last chance coming up. They'll be down by five runs. You're listening to VipeFortBend.com, and VipeFortBend.com's presentation of Fort Bend County softball is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity is a proud supporter of Fort Bend and Greater, high, uh, Greater Houston High School Sports on VibeFortBend.com. With the new Xfinity Sports Zone app, watch multiple games at once and check live stats and scores while watching another game. It's the best sports entertainment experience with Xfinity X1. I'm in an even better mood because I'm listening to Earth, Wind, and Fire. 
And by First Tire and Automotive, make sure your vehicles are in shape for the spring. First Tire and Automotive has locations in First Colony, Greatwood, Katy Cinco Ranch, and on Eldridge Road in Sugarland. All four of them are open on Saturdays. For the best prices on tires, go to firsttireandauto.com. And we want to thank the team at Office Depot in Sugarland for helping us take care of business. Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace, takes care of business every day, so VibeFortBend.com can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. We have brought you over 100 broadcasted sporting events of the 11 Fort Bend ISD High School varsity teams. And also a little bit of Fulcher and a little bit of Foster sprinkled in there. Charlotte O'Callahan, who has not been batting, she's been playing first base. And a DH has been batting in her place. She comes up trying to start a rally and swings at a pitch way out of the strike zone. You got to leave that alone. Batting in place of Autumn Rogers, who had struck out twice. Charlotte ready, swings at another high pitch and it's nothing in two. Malin Simmons trying to keep Charlotte guessing. Here's the 0-2, swing and a miss. Good morning, good afternoon and good night. One away in the seventh. Olivia Driscoll now is one for two. He, uh, she singled in the fifth. She's going to bat for herself. After her comes the top of the order, Alyssa Carter. Malin Simmons pitching brilliantly, brings that one, and it's down and in for a ball. She's only allowed four hits. By the way, something just dawned on me. I'm not going to be able to go to a commercial break while I get all my numbers together. I'm just going to have to give you the best totals that I have. Driscoll with a 2-0 count. Simmons still looking fresh as a daisy out there. Brings the 2-0. Strike at the knees. Malin steps to the back of the circle. The 2-1 on the way. Fouled off the screen over on the first base side. You know these rivalry games, it's just particularly galling when you get swept by a team during the district season and Ridgepoint threatening to sweep Austin. 6-1 here in the top of the seventh. Driscoll with a little dribbler right back to Simmons on two hops over to Green. And there are two out. Coming to the plate for the Bulldogs, left fielder, number 12, Alyssa Carter. All right, Alyssa Carter is the last hope for the Bulldogs. Simmons has not only been throwing a lot of strikes, She's been inducing a lot of weak contact. And the leadoff hitter, Alyssa Carter, is 0 for 3 this afternoon. Here it comes. High for a ball. She's probably in take mode until she gets a strike. Trailing by 5. Trying to get the heart of the order up there. That's outside for a ball. Lynn Simmons has been in control, ready for the 2-0, and it's lofted into center field and caught off there by Mays. And that ends the ball game. Well, we're going to get out of here pretty early. The sun is still very visible in the sky. Okay, so let's see. i got to write something down real quick. Uh, real quick. Okay, want to remind you to have a great Easter weekend. We don't have any ball games to cover for you tomorrow or Saturday. 
So you just be careful and enjoy yourself wherever you're going on Easter. On Easter, I, I wish they would play a little music here while I counted up runners left on base. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I got the number of runners left on for Austin, and for Ridgepoint, it was five, six. Uh, seven. I think it's eight. Okay, so here are your totals. For the Austin Bulldogs, one run on four hits, one error, and five runners left on base. For Ridgepoint, they could have scored more because they had six runs on six hits, two errors, and they left eight runners on base. The winning pitcher in today's game, well, of course, it's uh, Malin Simmons who allowed only those four hits. And let's see how many strikeouts she got in the game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine strikeouts for Malin Simmons and Angelina Leal. She takes the loss. She pitched well, but she gave up the six hits and she struck out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So Ridgepoint with the victory improves to 7-2 and two right there within hailing distance of both George Ranch, which beat these uh, Panther girls the first time, and also the Travis Tigers, who beat the Panther girls the first time. When they have the return match between uh, Ridgepoint and Travis, we're going to bring you that one. Should be interesting. All right, well, thank you so much for being with us. Our coverage has been brought to you by Xfinity, First Tire and Automotive, and also Office Depot. For everybody on the Vipe team, we love you. God bless. Have a good, safe weekend. And we will be back next week to bring you more great Fort Bend County sports. Roger Smith saying goodbye from the hard scrabble streets of Siena, where our final score was Ridge Point 6 and Austin 1. <laughs>